Israel's prime minister says strikes against Hezbollah across Lebanon will not stop vowing no mercy in its war with a militant group. Benjamin Netanyahu's defiant promise followed an Israeli attack on a Christian majority village in northern Lebanon, killing at least 21 people. Rescue workers deal with the aftermath of this latest airstrike. But this is not Beirut or the southern border area where Hezbollah usually operates. This strike hit the small, Christian-majority village of Aitu in northern Lebanon, an area that was thought to be safer. The city's mayor says the strike hit a house that was being rented to displaced families. Meanwhile, in southern Lebanon, Israel ordered residents of 25 villages to evacuate to the north as it expands its operations. It comes as hundreds of mourners attended the funerals of some of the soldiers killed in Sunday's Hezbollah drone attack on an Israeli military base. It was Hezbollah's deadliest attack in Israel since the war in Gaza began a year ago. In a visit to the base where the attack happened, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu vowed to keep the pressure on. We are fighting a difficult war against Iran's axis of evil that seeks to destroy us. They will not succeed. We are continuing to fight. We are paying a painful price, but we have considerable achievements which we will continue to make. I would like to make it clear we will continue to strike Hezbollah without mercy everywhere in Lebanon, including Beirut. Back in Lebanon, mourners also attended a funeral for 10 people killed in Israeli airstrikes. As the death count continues to rise in Lebanon, more than a quarter of a million people have fled across the border to the relative safety of Syria. And as this war intensifies, these numbers will only get higher. Journalist Balik Sladin is following the story for us from Tel Aviv. Balik, what have Israeli officials said about this strike in northern Lebanon? Well, there's still no, um, um, no statement about this specific incident in Ito, but a general statement only from the IDF saying that they have targeted uh, 20 uh, targets uh, throughout the night and uh, yesterday uh, by the Israeli Air Force. Uh, they have uh, targeted uh, Hama uh, Hezbollah cells and uh, Hezbollah's infrastructure as well as uh, surface to surface uh, mi uh, missile launchers. Uh, they didn't uh, say anything specific about the uh, attack uh, in Ito, but uh, Lebanese reports uh, said that uh, the uh, target was uh, Hezbollah, uh, a senior official uh, that goes by the name of uh, either uh, Ahmed Faqih or Ali Faqih. I've seen reports, conflicting reports about his name. He is originally from Aitarun, and this aligns with the reports that were saying that uh, the house was rented to families that were displaced from the south of Lebanon, from the town of Aitarun. Again, no specific uh, um, statement about this uh, incident uh, from the Israeli side. Mm -hmm. Now, in the south, Israel has asked UN peacekeepers to leave an area where they say Hezbollah is operating. What is that going to mean for the UN mission going forward? Well, from the Israeli perspective, uh, this whole mission has failed uh, throughout the 18 years where Hezbollah could um, build their infrastructure along uh, the Israeli-Lebanese border with no um, other, uh, with no uh, um, uh, intervention from the UN peacekeeping uh, mission. And, uh, uh, of course, uh, throughout the last year, they couldn't prevent Hezbollah from launching rockets from southern Lebanon toward the Israeli territory. And uh, that's why uh, we're saying that uh, currently Israel sees this mission as um, a, an obstacle for achieving its uh, um, a mission in southern Lebanon. Uh, they want to uh, pre they want to avoid a scenario where UN peacekeeping uh, um, soldiers 
uh, or hit or harmed in any of the confrontation or during any of the confrontation between Israel and Hezbollah in southern Lebanon. Uh, and in the long run, from what I understand, Israel would um, ask for the implementation of uh, uh, UN Resolution 1701, but only with Israeli um, uh, um, possible, possible uh, with like uh, with the, the UN giving Israel the permission, excuse me, to uh, actually implement that uh, uh, um, resolution, which means that they are not trusting anymore this mission in southern Lebanon, and uh, maybe they're not asking that they to leave temporarily, but even permanently. Now, the office of the Israeli prime minister has pushed back against media reports that he gave assurances to the U.S. president about how um, his country would retaliate against Iran. At this point, what do we know about what the actual plans look like? Well, yesterday there was a very important cabinet meeting uh, uh, in the prime minister's office uh, during the night. Uh, we're still don't have uh, uh, details about what uh, exactly happened there, but uh, the main issue was, of course, the Iranian uh, or the strike on Iran after uh, they struck Israel uh, about a week and a half ago. Um, so it's not clear whether they're going to be um, targeting of any nuclear facilities or oil facilities. That's, of course, something that uh, needs to take in consideration the American presence in the region and the threat that could be imposed to the American soldiers in the region. But from the Iranian side, and that's what I could understand, they're not trusting these reports. They think that these leaks are uh, may, the main uh, purpose is actually to trick the Iranians. And after all, Israel will go for uh, the other um, uh, um, targets that are uh, more significant uh, uh, in uh, Iran. Uh, but, uh, of course, uh, uh, the timing here is very important as well. Uh, today and uh, tomorrow, the THAAD uh, air defense system uh, will arrive to Israel. And uh, we are in the midst of uh, Israeli Jewish holidays um, that starts tomorrow, the Sukkot holiday, and ends next week. So maybe we're not going to see any Israeli strike in Iran uh, by the end of, uh, uh, not the coming uh, weekend, but the one after. All right. That was journalist Balik Sladin in Tel Aviv. Thanks for your time. Journalist Karim El Gawari joins us now from the Lebanese capital, Beirut. Karim, you've been out reporting, talking to people. What's the mood in Lebanon, especially after Netanyahu's latest threats? Well, anticipation of what's happening next. Uh, basically, until now, most of the Israeli strikes were in the south of the Beka Valley or in the south of Beirut. Now, we, again, we had a strike north of Beirut in a predominantly uh, Christian area uh, in a village, I too, that uh, the house was hit. We had 21 people dead. Uh, the mayor says that uh, uh, this was a family or this was people that escaped from the south, thinking that this would be a safe area, a disaster strike in the village, 21 people dead. Uh, many of them are difficult to identify. The rescue workers started to do DNA tests in order to figure out who are these bodies that are in front of them, and they are very hard to identify. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu has said there will be no mercy and strikes will continue all across Lebanon. How are people preparing for what might lie ahead? <laughs> how, how can you prepare? I mean, like, since an hour, I don't know if your viewers can hear this, but for example, here, I'm in the center of Beirut. Since an hour, there's an Israeli drone circling about our head. And of course, everyone in this area is asking, what are they looking for? Is the next uh, target of their strike uh, in this area? There is really not much people can do. It's this feeling of being totally exposed. And when it happens, there are no sirens, there are no warnings, there are no shelters uh, people can go to. The only thing they can do is sit where they are and hope that they are not in the wrong place at the wrong moment, at the wrong time when it happens. I also want to talk about the peacekeepers in the south. You were down there recently. They have since come under attack and been told by the IDF to leave the area. What does that mean for their mission? What role can UNIFIL really play in such circumstances? 
well, very difficult. There was once one, uh, one incident, uh, an observation tower was uh, shot at by an Israeli tank in another tank in another incident. Two Israeli tanks broke into the main gate of one of the uh, UNIFIL positions uh, down in the south. What UNIFIL is saying now and what the head of peacekeeping mission in New York is saying, we are going to stay here, no matter if uh, Netanyahu asks now twice for the UNIFIL people to uh, move from there, they will stay and uh, um, wait what's going uh, to happen next because their mission is to to see, to monitor, and then to report uh, first to the headquarters uh, here in Lebanon and then from there to the headquarters in New York and to the Security Council. One of the peacekeepers basically told me when I was there, he said, we are the eyes and ears of the Security Council here in southern Lebanon. And that's the reason, I think, why they're absolutely refusing now to abandon their positions. And there is a lot of international condemnation uh, for what is happening. We had the EU uh, Foreign Minister Joseph Borrell yesterday saying uh, uh, in the framework of the minister, uh, meeting of the ministers of foreign affairs in Luxembourg, the EU ministers saying that this was a violation against international law, the strikes against uh, UNIFEL. This is not acceptable and this has to stop immediately. So we're going to set, see if this is going to happen, or if we have to go to see more attacks, more strikes against the Blue Helmets in southern Lebanon. As journalist Karim Al-Gawari reporting from Beirut. Karim, always great speaking to you. Thank you so much.